It's that time. Welcome to Roadmap. How to take three listings a week until you're ready for more. And this is a, is a special show. How it, the show is how to add, easily add, 50 sales to your business. How about that? We encourage you to take notes and apply as much of the knowledge as quickly as you can. And then use the copycat principle. If you're watching on Vulcan 7 or the Lead Gen Facebook group, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions during the broadcast. Get your questions in early, folks. Let me introduce my co-host from San Diego, Carly Hathaway. That's carlyhathaway.com. Hi, Carly. How's the real estate business? Hi, Ren. Hi, everybody. Real estate business is great. San Diego market is amazing, as always. Good. Super great to be able to How's the snow? Yeah. No snow. <laughs> no snow. It's beautiful. 80 degrees out. <laughs> 80 degree. There you go. Wonderful. So um, we're gonna, we have an exciting show, uh, Carly. We haven't done this in a long time. And that is how to easily add 50 sales to your business. Easily. Easily add 50 sales. And there are people here that would like to have 50 sales. There, maybe there are 12 or 18 sales a year or 22. And this will take them to 50. If you're at 50 and you're going to 100, Great, if you're at 100 and you wanna to go to 150, this is about adding 50, adding 50. It's a formula and you can just keep working that formula out to 250, 300. This will make you a quarter of a million dollars additional over what you're making now and if you need to make a million dollars, you know, it's sort of like that show. What was that show, Carly? <clears throat> Who wants to be a millionaire? I like right. it. Who wants to be a millionaire? Right, and this is the, this is the only industry. business, this is the only business where you can make a million dollars every year if you follow a very strict formula. You can make a million a year and you don't have eight years of med school. And even then, a lot of times you don't have a million dollars a year. And no, and no student loans. <laughs> and no student loans, that's right. But this is the business that you can do it in. And we're gonna go over in a very simple way, the formula for that. And, and so just take some notes and then use the copycat principle folks, because here's the secret. If you're working six, seven days a week and working late hours, that goes away. You work Monday through Friday, start early, end early, take the weekends off, take six to eight weeks vacation a year. And it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple, okay? So let's take a look at how we do that. So let's say we wanna add 50, 50, 50 sales, 50 sales. So uh, what we're going to use is a formula is 50 sales. So we'll say 50 sales uh, and, and we're going to use a formula of um, listings taken equals closed sales. Now, why would, if you, if you take 50 listings, how do you end up with 50 closings? How would you, how do you do that, Carly? I mean, you'd have to sell every single one, right? No. 50, if, 50? So if you take 50, list, 50 listings, 50 listings taken, equals 50, I'll say 50 plus closed sales. Oh, so maybe the buyers that come from them. There we go, that's right. Because if you take 50 listings, some of those are not gonna sell, right? Right, definitely. Okay, so how many will sell out of 50? Uh, let's let's not 40. assume all sell, pardon? I'd say 40. Okay, let's say 40 sell. So 40 listings sell and you're going to have you're going to have some you're going to have some buyers that are caused by those 40 listings sold now where do those and and then feel free folks on the on the uh, chat to ask questions where is the number one source of the buyers out of this whole deal what's the number one source of the buyers number should we one let someone else answer or should i answer no don't you answer you better let somebody else answer so so okay. if somebody would type in where the where is the number one source if you take 50 listings What's the number one source of buyer activity for you? Silence. Nobody Come wants on, you to guys. speak. You know Nobody this wants to speak. speak. Nobody wants to speak. Okay, that's it. Contacts on the list. Oh, the sellers. Okay, Lawrence, I think you might be right. Deborah says, Deborah Fairchild says, open houses. Art says, contacts on listings. Bill Vernon says, sign calls. And if we were playing Family Feud, we'd say, sign calls. Is it the number one answer? <clears throat> we would say Deborah Fairchild, open houses. Is that the number one answer? <clears throat> no, because 
I didn't hold open houses. We would say, uh, but Lawrence has got it right. So it's the number one answer on Family Feud is what, what Carla? What is the number one answer? It begins with an H. Oh, homeless people. Homeless people. You've served 40 <laughs> listings. Some of those people are homeless and they have to buy either locally or you make referral money. But let's say, okay, how many 40 listings sold in your market? How, how many of those would then buy something locally maybe? What, what would you say for every? Let's say half. I'd say half. I think it'd be as many as half. So, that, so you yeah, got listing sales, uh, pl uh, creates 20 buyer sales. Now, these are the best buyers. These are the best buyers. Are they in a hurry? Yes. Are they extremely loyal to you? Yes, because you've done so They're not going to take much time, them. and they're in a hurry. Great. Yeah. Because they love you. You just sold their house. So now, so now 50 listings taken is really 50 plus, so really in this case. It's really 60 closed, right? Yeah, definitely. Right. So there's the formula. So then we have to back it out. To take 50 listings, how many do we have to take a week? How many do we have to take a week? How many weeks are there in a year? How many weeks in a year? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Yes, 52. Lawrence, you got it right again. Lawrence is, uh, is a, right on the bed here. So there are 100, I mean, there's, 52 weeks in a year. So basically we have to take one listing a week. Now here's the interesting thing. Before we go into reducing it to the ridiculous here, folks, take a look at this. Uh, if we only look at the money off 40 listings sold, and I'm gonna use a real low number on a commissions because there are people from Louisiana and there are people from San Diego. Some, we're, some are making 18,000 commissions, some are making you know, five and six, but we're gonna use a, a figure of eight, okay? So $8,000 commission times 40 is 300, it's, uh, it's 320K, right? That's not bad, 320K. Now, what am I not counting? I'm not counting the other 20 buyer sales. 20 times eight is, uh, that's another 160. Now, if you're doing it right, you won't work with, you'll work with zero of those buyers. You're, so 160, you're gonna say bye-bye to maybe, maybe as much as 80,000, as much as half for the buyers, as much as, but maybe less. But we'll, we'll just say in a worst case situation, uh, 80K goes to the buyer's agents, and 80K is your admin, pays for all your admin plus overhead. So we're not even gonna we're not even gonna pretend that you make that money because this needs to be your pre-tax net. The listings that you take that you sell is your pre-tax net income. The buyer, uh, the money on the buyer side pays all your overhead and the buyers. Is that fair? So if you're making yes. three hundred twenty thousand, and all you did is take one listing a week, and you worked with zero buyers, think about that. All you have to do, Monday morning at 7 a.m., you wake up and go, I've got to take one listing this week. That's all I have to do. And I will have this. Now, if you take three a week, then you're making a million, right? Okay. Somewhere around there. Depending yes. on it's a good life. One a week. So if you took away all the distractions in your office, you got to your office, and you weren't allowed to do anything except for take one listing a week. You weren't allowed to do anything else. You had to delegate everything else. Delegate working with the buyers. Delegate fooling with the pending folder. Delegate every step of the way. And I'm not saying hire incompetent people. I'm not saying work with incompetent people at all. Work with competent people that will supplement and strengthen your, your, your small team that you're operating. That's how, we, that's how this works, folks. And you can start out of the gate, folks, as a new agent. We have agents that have been on the show in their first year have done this, done this exact formula. And now they make $3 million a year. And you, you know what we're talking about. So it, it can be that simple. It's not easy. But what gets in the way? Let's look at what gets in the way. What gets in the way? I should leave this up for a little longer. What? Yes, what? yes. I, need to do that. I think I think what gets in the way is our ourselves. 
don't you guys think like you know having a bad day of phone calls or something like that it's the discouraging um inner monologue right creative avoidance behavior this is the uh, i need to go potty i need a cup of coffee i need to work on my file all oh, the inspections coming up administrative folders your pending folders need to be on the other side of the room locked up away from you you're not allowed near them not allowed to touch them so pending folders creative avoidance behavior what else gets in the way is if everybody does this really well there's one thing that will still get in the way and because they they haven't thought this through and what will happen is you sell i'm not going to use your numbers i'm going to use ohio numbers i'm going to use Mil Milwaukee numbers, or I'm going to use Dallas numbers. I'm going to say that you sell a, a $250,000 house, okay? All right, you sell that, your listing sold. And they have told you they're going to go out and buy an $800,000 house, which in your market means $24,000 in commission. And you tell yourself a story, well, I can't look for listings because I'm not going to give away half of this to some buyer agent because there are only four houses to show anyway. And so I can't prospect this week, I can't take any listings. And then that one week turns into two weeks and then fiddling around with the whole process and you may save $12,000 in your head, but you lose a lot more because you're not taking listings and you're, you lose your, you break your stride. So those that 24,000, but here's the deal. If you're working with somebody regularly, you refer things out at 25, 50, and 75. And this is a 75, a good example of a 75. You would say, here's the thing, you work with them and you're gonna get 25%. I'm gonna pay you $6,000. There are only four homes to show. Do you think you can handle that? And if they say no, then say next. Somebody is standing behind you that said, yes, I'll take 6,000 for showing four homes. You remember we had Marilyn Lair and her daughter, Kim, on the show a few weeks ago. Remember how much they're paying to show homes, show, uh, showing assistance? I think they were just paying a flat fee, right? $30 a house. Yeah. So yeah. don't get hung up on the 50-50 rule. Because what you don't want to have happen is to sell the 250, the buyers are going to go out and buy an eight and tell yourself a story. You have to be, you have to be the one to work. Yeah, because if you don't have a competent person to show them an eight hundred thousand dollar house. Get somebody who's competent. It means we have to hire well. Right, because in that time you could have taken how many more listings or gone on how many more listing appointments. That's it, and like David Polvinsky says here, is you know family and life. You know, it, with this formula, you get that you can be with your family, you can be with your life because it's Monday through Friday. Basically, you know, it's like you know, eight to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday with six to eight weeks vacation a year. Mar um, um, Marianne Reese was on our show a few weeks ago. I saw her yesterday. You know what she told me? She goes, I sold four homes last week and I was out of town. Okay. Love do that. that working, do that working with buyers. Uh -huh. No, not possible. Not possible, but she sold four. That's not bad being out of town and, and, and selling four homes pretty good deal yeah, right so we can't let that get in our way buyers take time listings take skill you know and 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 there's a dangerous road going on here and folks go to inman news inman.com and read the news and watch i mean you have a lot you have purple bricks and compass and all these other companies shooting up and You've seen what Airbnb has done and Uber has done. Pretty soon, there'll be an Uber agent who will, you know, somebody will go onto their tablet and go, I wanna look at this house, this one, this one, this one. Click a little button and Uber Realtor drives around with a little R on their ball cap and, and they're called, get in, and shows them the houses, uh, shows them four or five houses and they click, paid $36 to that person for taking them and showing them four or five houses. And then if they wanted to put in an offer, they could click another thing for $500, they can get a top-notch agent to negotiate the whole piece. You have to be on the listing side. You got to be on the listing side. It's, you know, automation is coming. Be a powerful listing agent, which is a lot of scripts and accountability. So what else gets in the way? There was a clue there. What else gets in the way? I think the motivation, right? 
I don't know. Poverty doesn't seem to be a good motivator. I think it is. I think, you know, our mindset, um, you know, sticking with it, that kind of stuff gets in the way. Well, yeah, because it creates avoidance behavior, but, you know, and, you know but it's, it's a lack of structure. If, if we have the structure, because think about it, if, if your structure, well, the analogy is always sports and athletics and exercise. If you had to meet somebody at the gym tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m., would you be there? They're standing there, Carly, waiting for you. <laughs> would you be there? Yes, 100%. Is there an agent waiting for, typically waiting for an agent, for somebody like you to come into the office and start making calls? No, typically. there isn't. I'm not, not unless you not start it up. So unless, if you have the structure, if you have the structure, but you have to build that. You have to get accountability partners, role play partners, a routine. And you have to have scripts yeah, and all the Right, and you have to have standards and procedures. Yeah, I almost need a paper towel, it's, it's wet. But, um, and procedures, so that everything's structured. My listing appointments were four o'clock and six o'clock. I filled my fours first. And if somebody said, well, can you come at 7.30 because we'll be eating dinner at 6.30, I'd say, how about six? I never want to be on the backside of dinner or else I wouldn't get home till 9.30 or 10. But set standards. I mean, and, and, and I've had people fight me and say uh, they can't do this, that, that you know, they can't do four and six. But I had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, four, six, four, six, four, six, four, six. I didn't have a problem, but what would happen is I'd go, can you do four o'clock on Thursday? Well, what about six? No, I can't do it. I said, well, what about Wednesday? Can you do four? You can you do? Eventually they get the hint that if those are the choices, four, six, four, six, four, six, four, six. And 98 and a half percent of the time you'll fill those. And so you have some structure. Yeah, yeah. And then what about, so every agent that we've talked to on, interviewed on the show, they have a really strict morning routine. Yeah. So. I mean, obviously that's important because like I was saying earlier, we don't clock in and we don't clock out in this industry. We have to have accountability partners. So, you know, Ren, what's your best exact schedule to stick to? And you should clock in and clock out. You know, yeah. when, you talk, when we talk to some of the best people, and I'm trying to think of who it was two weeks ago, did the exact same thing Jeff Quinton did. Uh, you know, people go, gosh, you're selling that many homes. I don't know if I want to work that hard. How, uh, how many days a week uh, do you work? And he looked, he, he saw him look over like that. I'm trying to think of who it was. It was somebody in the last couple of shows and they did the same thing. Looked over and said, well, in November, I'm working 21 days. In December, I'm working 17 days. And they were looking over at their schedule. It could, basically, it said on, off, off, on, on, off. Mm -hmm. it, everything was pre-planned as if mm -hmm. you were clocking in and clocking out. Everything was pre-planned. It was yeah, all scheduled. Yeah. You can't just wing it. And too many people wing it. Uh, agree. But if and every day, all you're doing is one listing a week. So where is that business going to come from? So we have to look at where the business is going to come from. Mm -hmm. And I remember he said he had a bet with everyone in the office that he had, if he wasn't in the office by 730, he had to pay them all $100. There you go. And I love it when you have little cheap sucker bets like that. Whether mm -hmm. maybe it's $20, your assistant said, if you don't see me on the phone during these times, unless I'm in the restroom, you can feel free to come in and take a $20 bill out of the jar in front of me. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So yeah, it's getting the schedule and sticking to it. So, I mean, what do you think about, what was your schedule, Ren, when you were, you know, selling 16, 17? Yeah, I, I always took two, three listings a week, uh, if not more. So it, uh, yeah, 7.30 role play, 8 a.m. on the phone, uh, 11.30 return calls and go to lunch. And then I had a four and a six or a four and a six or nothing. And if I had nothing, I would make some more calls for another hour and a half and then go home early. But you know, right. at, at the end of the month, I had 12, 14, 16, 18 listings a month. So uh -huh. one, it, worked, it worked. So David, yeah, I see where you're saying that expireds and FISBOs are beaten up by everyone. That's right. So there's, there's, you have to be in the front. You have to be, you can't be the 14th caller calling. You know, and sometimes that means starting at the shallow end of the pool, if you're newer to this, calling old expires. 
the, the success rate with old expireds with newer agents is really high, really high. If you don't have enough of them, call our office. We'll make sure you get plenty of old expireds. For sale by owners, if, if you're to the point and you're strong, because they're, they're friendly, but sometimes they'll talk to too many agents. So you have to really get skilled in the area of expireds and for sale by owners. Just listed, just sold. Are a great source of business? Corporates, and corporates encompasses a lot of things. And corporates is business that keeps on giving. It's pipeline business. You pick a, some insurance company, 250 employees, and you talk to their HR department, or if they're real small, that may be a role that somebody else has, and you become the representative for that company. And every year you get six, eight, 10 transactions, or maybe one or two if it's a real small company. And, and you do corporate business. So there's, there's other types of corporate or probate, you know, where people are dying to list, you know, they, there's an estate that's <laughs> probate. or divorce. Uh, divorce a lot of times can be two or three sales. And you can sometimes get a little heavy on the buy side on that, but there's the listing side. And there's a mile long list calling around a recent listing or a recent sale. There, there's plenty of people to call and rejection is part of it. And that's why we have the mind chatter because the rejection is simple, but it's not easy, it's not fun. But one listening a week. Questions, anybody? Sylvia, do you have a question? Bill, do you have a question? David, Edgar, Deborah, who else? So well, I'm hearing you're talking Ren, a lot about calling people and really it being a contact sport, which you've said before. Yeah. So we have really have to go out and get the business. We can't, can we just, mass email everyone or send postcards. Well, how's like, that working for most people? And they call it the dirty little secret. There are people that have that figured out and their net income, net income after expenses ain't pretty. Agreed, yeah. They, they're doing a lot of units, but they're sort of like the Exxon station. They're only making three or four cents a gallon. They're just not making much per gallon. So if you talk to people, you can count on it. They right. get, I mean, they're, they're, we've seen too many people try to automate this process and they come and go, mostly go. <laughs> Deborah, what about door knocking? It's a great thing. And if you watch the show, we have a lot of people that door knock. I mean, Alex, uh, his team is on segways motoring around, which I thought was hilarious. But door knocking works very, very well. I mean, there's your highest level of contact with people. Definitely. Uh, my coach was telling me, you know, call, make your calls in the morning. If you don't reach your contacts in the afternoon, if you don't have a listing appointment, go door knock. Why not? Yeah. So, so if, if you know, you're not going to get a listing appointment every single day, but if every day you spend a good three hours before looking, you're going to average one a day. And all you need Definitely. to do is take one a week based on this simple formula. That's just one, one a week, one a week. You've got all week to take one listing. And you know, what's your mom for if she can't list her home with you? <laughs> so, all the fun. Questions. An agent dropped off a pumpkin on my front doorstep yesterday, thanks. But I know a good realtor. There we go. Hi, Don Sheets. That's a good one. Um, uh, Ryan Lally on Facebook uh, wants to know how to get it, get in with corporate sellers. Well, in most major cities, if you go to, um, not most major cities, this is a lot of the cities in the U.S. If you go to B-I-Z-J-O-U-R-N-A-L-S dot com, uh, many cities across the U.S. have a business journal page that's listed here. Now, there are many cities that are missing from that. And so what you do is you go to Google and type in your city name and put quote, business journal, unquote, in your city name, and you'll find your local business journal. Every major city has a business journal of some sort. And the articles typically talk about companies that are growing and hiring or companies that are moving. And then you, it tells you who the key players are and call them up. I've gotten a lot of business from doing that. A lot of business from calling, uh, looking in there, reading so-and-so, so-and-so is the CEO. Call, call and ask for the CEO. It doesn't matter. You would be surprised at how far you get. And then and it, it's a numbers game because not many real estate agents are doing this. 
So you'll, you know, it's business to business. So go for that. Uh, moving and storage companies were a great source because now many times I knew somebody was moving before a moving and storage company did. Mm -hmm. And many times a moving and storage company will know somebody's moving before a real estate agent does. So develop relationships with the moving and storage companies. I went around and started doing that and I found um, all of them were drinking out of this coffee cup with this real estate agent's name on it. So there was one other oh, person in my town nice. that had figured that out. So yeah, it, and uh, someone that I was uh, working with temporarily on a coaching basis, which I don't do a whole lot anymore, but just was talking about how they went around to some yard sales and picked up listings. Because one out, what is it, one out of every eight yard sales, somebody, they're gonna sell the house here shortly. So, what a great idea. Yeah, I mean, there's mile long list of where to of find box. a seller. There's plenty of places to find a seller. Yeah, but you gotta and be if your job is only take one listing a week, and your pre-tax net is it's invisible. You're 320,000 pre-tax net, taking one listing a week, working Monday through Friday, daytime hours. What else could you want? How do you overcome the fact that people not even let you start a conversation realizing you're a realtor calling, they hang up on you? Well, Jessica, that's interesting. Um, and there are a whole lot of skills in that. And that now, what was the com most com common thing on our last 50 shows that, uh, that every single person that we interviewed, Carly, uh, the one, there, there were several things that were common, but there's a very common thing where they learn how to do what they do. I think it's definitely internalizing the script. Internalizing scripts, it was, they're all in some sort of coaching with some sort of coaching company. And then that forces them to internalize the scripts. And, and, and one of it is, Jessica, is marrying and matching. Because for much of my career, I called people that were very angry, expired, and they had talked to seven other agents, and I was able to get in rapport without them hanging up. But there's little techniques. And some of that has to do with saying hello back the same way they say hello to you and mirroring and matching their tonality. Mm -hmm. to the point, almost to a fault, because people won't hang up on themselves. So if you go, if you, if they go, hello, and you go, and you go, hi, I'm David Smith, and I'm, then they're going to hang up on you before you get very far. But if you go, if they go, hello, and you go, hello, I'm calling, you know, and you talk like them or their family, for, for whatever strange reason, they'll hang in there a little longer than they normally would. But you yeah. have to make a compelling value proposition in about seven seconds. But all that is, there is a formula. Jessica, there's a key that will open that lock and make that door come open. And it's it takes practice, but it, it does work. It definitely does. I, and the scripts help because the scripts tell you when they say, oh, you're the 17th person that called me. You know, the scripts tell you exactly what to say that you overcome that objection, right? Oh my gosh, well, how do I, how do you think I feel? I have to work with these people every day. Right, and if you go shadow people that are really good at it, because sometimes when you hear the tonality of what is said and you listen to both sides of the conversation of somebody that's been doing it for 10, 12, 15 years, you did that with Hal Swayze. Yes. Shadow him, listen incredible. to the words. And all you have to do is use the copycat print, so shadow those people. So um, um, I'm reading this here. It says, uh, if I change my focus to only listing properties, what do I get do with the 100 plus buyer leads per month that I get? So let's, that's an interesting question because David Blinsky, if you, tip, if you had truly had 100 buyer leads that were worth a darn, you would be a very rich soul because you could pick 10 people and go, here's 10 for you and 10 for you and 10 for you and 10 for you. But what do we know about those 100 plus leads? They aren't worth a darn. No. How many out of those hundred, there's probably one or two or three. And somebody's got to work those very hard. Refer them out. Refer them out. There take, you go. Take 25%. And let somebody else, you know, the, you know, the, give it to the blind squirrels. Every once in a while, they find a nut. <laughs> let them drive them around all day, every day. Don Sheets will have to interview you sometime. Uh, he's, he's making some good points. And I've watched Don Sheets prospect. I, I had a, the privilege of getting to watch him make calls. And because um, I didn't know how good he was. And I'm like, he's good. 
So it's tonality, mirroring, and matching, building rapport, assuming rapport, which is a real trick where you talk to somebody as if you've known them your whole life. That's assuming rapport. Yeah. Really, he's really, really good at that. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I'm reading on here. Pre-qualifying for sale bonders and expires to find motivation, make sure they actually are able to sell and get the listing appointment rather than just previews. Absolutely. So when you look at for sale by owners, for sale by owners, there's only two things you have to know and you're going to throw 85% of the leads in the trash. There's only two things you have to find out in a conversation. Just say your home's for sale. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about it in case I have a buyer for the home. Yes. You know, where you, you know, find out where they're moving to and how soon they have to be there. Okay. And what's important about moving there. And from that determine, do they have to sell and do they have to sell right away? Because if they, if those aren't a yes and a yes, then throw the lead in the trash. If they have plenty of time, they're going to talk to plenty of agents and, and you won't be the one listing it. If they don't have to sell, it isn't going to go anywhere. So if they have to sell and they have to sell right away, then you're going to keep one lead out of six and throw the other five away as painful as that is. Throw them away, throw them away, throw them away. Hopefully this helped a lot of you. Um, do you offer one day listening to a FISBO to hold their house open to find buyers and create trust? Deborah, if you want to hold open houses, it's the least um, level of rejection. And that's why agents hold open houses because one out of every 10 homes sold comes from an open house. But, it, mm -hmm. but it's not the house held open as we know because otherwise that would work. So it, you know, it's such a high percentage. It's a way of meeting people, more buyers than sellers. But if, you, if you're going that route, just be happy with a little mediocrity. But if you're willing to talk to 30, 40, 50 people a week, Monday through Friday, you won't have to hold it open on Sunday and, and work off of potluck. What is your technique for capturing uh, a share of a saturated higher end listing market? Edgar, that's great. Yeah, because a saturated higher end listing market can be competitive. You're talking about you know, some lower commissions and everything else. Uh, you got to have a lot of polish. That, that's a long answer, Edgar. And we're getting near the end of our show. In fact, we're at the end of our show. Um, well, here's our last question. Jessica Chavez says, what do you do when a seller says, yes, they're interviewing more, uh, more than one agent for the job of selling their home? You wanna be first, last, or in between the other appointments seller may have scheduled? Generally speaking, unless it's on the same day, I wouldn't wanna be in the middle. Uh, if it's, if it's um, uh, I've seen sometimes where they'll have like a, uh, a four and a six and an eight, and I didn't want to be the six because there can be can be a little forgettable. But sometimes first or last or wherever it falls in, best thing is just to make sure yours stands out. Um, I don't know about self storage, Bill Vernon, but thank you for everybody. And we have our commercials. If you're watching on Vulcan Seven, you want to get involved with the Lead Gen Facebook group who airs the show. They're at facebookcom forward slash groups forward slash got objections and i want to thank aaron wittenstein who runs the group he runs a program called expired mastery elite.com and finally if you're watching on facebook and you're not yet involved with vulcan 7 make sure to sign up at vulcan 7.com forward slash lead gen for a special deal and the secret i always took it worked every time and it was 11 30 i was returning calls and sometimes i had a, a i had a, a diversion so I would prospect from 8, 9, 10, 11, 11, 30, return some calls, and then I would go to the freezer and get some delicious Grater's Mint Chocolate Chip. It's the only one for the listing business. All the other flavors are for working with buyers. And if your listing is a little slow to sell, dig a hole in the front yard and bury it upside down in the house to sell right away. Grater's Mint Chocolate Chip, you can get it anywhere in North America. Go to graters.com. See you guys next week. Glad you could be here. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Ren, thank you. One listening a week, folks. Just one a week. One a week. I think we all had some great takeaways. Thank you so yeah. much. Glad you could be here.